Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Tonight's the Women Tell All episode of The Bachelor, which is where we have to remember whose names are whose. Oh, you were on this season? I forgot. We'll have some night one people try to get their words in, boost those Instagram followers, and hear from villains. Uh, don't think it's going to be a crazy Women Tell All, but we will share a clip from Reality Steve's podcast uh, where he gives us all of the info of what he knows of the season. So whenever we have a woman tell all spoiler video, let's just imagine it's a spoiler video for the whole season. Because someone the other day when I posted who the next Bachelorette might be, of course it was a spoiler video and they got upset that they got spoiled. I don't know what to tell people anymore other than reading comprehension. Is that an all-time low listening comprehension as well? So I can't blame people. Maybe they weren't educated on what spoiler means, but it means y'all's about to find out what happens. Now, we don't know too, too much of what happens on the Women Tell All, um, I, I guess because maybe nothing too interesting, but wouldn't it be nice if there is something wild from the episode that we haven't heard yet? Okay. Let's go over the fantasy suite eliminations, and then we'll share what Reality Steve had to say, okay? So if you didn't want these spoilers, too bad. I gave you enough chance to get out of here. We got Daisy, Rachel, and Kelsey, and uh, we're going to find out which of these didn't make it past the fantasy suite to the finale, and we know now that that person is Rachel, the ICU nurse from Hawaii. She'll be on the Women Tell All tonight, so we'll have some a little bit more about that. I'm not going to go past the final two. Maybe we know who wins. Maybe we don't. Kelsey and Daisy. So they'll not be here at the Women Tell All. And there isn't even a real trailer for the Women Tell All tonight. It'll probably be a mix between um, a little bit of The Bachelor, like the first 30 to 45 minutes, and then they're going to mix it into the live taping, of course, filmed last week, but live taping of the woman tell all we've got Sydney right here giving us her diva energy. I have to say, regardless of what you think of Sydney, it's a pretty badass outfit. She's got like tights on, I guess with a uh, topless then fur jacket. I mean, pretty cool. If you ask me, she says ready to tell all and we're ready to listen to what she has to say. We'll have to see if she has the same beef that um, Maria, you know, uh, with Maria, even though of course it was about as fabricated as could be. We'll get into that and also some more on Maria after we hear what Steve has to say. Have a listen. And again, we always say go support the original content creator here. Go get, give a listen, a like, a subscribe to Reality Steve's podcast. I know I'm going to want people to support me when they hear me on other people's podcasts tomorrow. It should be a big day for us. So we're all about spreading that love. It's the Brooklyn way. Here's what Steve had to say. One is 80%. That's all I'm asking. I'm kidding. All right. So tonight is Women Tell All. And you know that um, I've reported what I have on it. Uh, I don't think it's going to be too uh, crazy of an episode. We're only going to get, uh, you know, probably 90 minutes of Women Tell All because I got to believe the first 20 or 30 minutes of tonight's show, maybe a little bit more or maybe a little bit less. Maybe it's only 15 minutes or so is going to be dedicated to how last week's episode ended, which we know Joey and Kelsey talk over her letter that doesn't really do anything that's more of a tv thing that they just wanted to suck people in because clearly kelsey sticks around she doesn't leave or anything like that and we know that she's obviously the winner this season so clearly the note didn't really do anything in terms of anything negative and then tonight we'll see rachel get eliminated because she is at the women tell all um, we saw on a preview that maria is in the hot seat on women tell all i'm sure rachel is as well and um, there's going to be drama, obviously, with the women surrounding uh, Maria. But there's, you know, there's a side of the the Leas, the Sydneys, the Jesses, and then there's the Maria side, who is Maria and the sisters, and I believe Edwina as well is on Maria's side. So we'll see how it all plays out. Again, you got to remember, this is literally four months after these women were on the show, and it's just really hard for me. And should be hard for all of you as a viewer to sit there and watch and be like, are these women really that bothered by anything Maria did four months later? I mean, I totally understand in the moment, you know, they just they didn't like her approach to things. They thought she was rather aggressive. That's fine. She's not a horrible human being whatsoever. Um, but is she a little loud and is she, you know, speak for herself? And did she kind of not go with the flow of the rest of the group? Yeah, she has said that in post show interviews that Maria is just like, yeah, I just. I'm kind of the, the, the outlier here. I, I just kind of say and do my own thing. And 
clearly that rubs some of the women the wrong way. Now, I- yeah. So, and this isn't new to Maria either. This is something she has actually, I guess, experienced in her hometown. So we'll get into Maria in a second. Someone had posted this: the next Bachelorette has been chosen. And she is Maria. I went out for dinner last night with a friend of mine who is related to Maria's family through marriage, and she confirmed to me that Maria has already signed a contract to be the next Bachelorette. Producers absolutely love her and what she's done for their ratings. Apparently, Maria's dad was originally not on board, but agreed to her doing it later on. Now, this, okay, doesn't mean she's going to be the next Bachelorette. This just means she signed the contract to be that. It could, I'm sure they had her and Daisy both sign contracts. We hear this happens because what if Maria finds the love of her life and bails on going on the show a few weeks beforehand? So this is just kind of like proof that they want to make sure multiple people are covered here. Now, here's an interesting post someone made. Maria from Small Town. There's a post about Maria being bullied. OP claims to have grown up where Maria grew up, insinuating it was a super small town and Maria was by far the most attractive person there. So attractive that people made rumors in middle school about her giving BJs that apparently was all untrue and claiming that Maria never brought anyone home because it would have caused talk in the town about her having multiple boyfriends. Most of the comments were saying it looked like the post was written by Maria and or her PR team because it just didn't seem like a likely story. I just went back to the post post to add a comment and it looks like it's been deleted. I find it very annoying that Maria's PR team has created a narrative that people are mean to Maria just because she's so pretty, when personally I've never encountered girls acting that way. I couldn't agree less with this person. I think people absolutely act this way towards pretty people. Pretty girls naturally have lots of friends and hang out with the other pretty people. The story of Maria being so beyond the level of attractiveness compared to anyone else in her town would only check out if she was a supermodel level of pretty. By the way, no one said this. This is how she, They're incorporating hyperbole here. No one said she was beyond the level of attractive. I do not like the term that Joey called Maria rough around the edges. I think what he meant is that she can easily rub people the wrong way. So some commented, I'm sorry if it's hard for you to believe, but this absolutely happens. I went to school in a very small college town and people talk in are relentless. I'd go out on a date and people would talk, take pictures of me and my date at bars and send them to their group chats. So absolutely, I could believe that Maria could be treated this way. And, you know, is she the most beautiful person in the world? Well, that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but she is someone who obviously conjures up a lot of feelings from others through her own confidence and awareness of her own sexuality. That doesn't mean she's rough around the edges. That's a problem other people have to deal with. If you think Maria's too uh, much of a good thing and it's competition because of your scarcity mentality, you should work on that. This whole idea that Maria's this person who causes these problems, I just disagree with. She lives in her own reality and the abrasiveness comes from other people not being able to keep up. I could totally understand that in the moment. They were not fans of her while they were filming the show. Fine. But four months later, you know, they're told to bring it up. They're told to be like, hey, when you go out there, you need to call out Maria for what you didn't like her saying. And I'm guessing most of these women, if they had their way, would just be like, do I really have to? Is this necessary? Is this going to accomplish anything? We know in the past that the Women Tell All has always been used for the Bachelor in Paradise audition. You know, you'll hear from women that got eliminated the first and second night, and you're and you're just like, you were barely there. How can you even say what things that were happening in the house or how people felt? You weren't there to experience it. But certainly looking like there's no Bachelor in Paradise this summer, but they're still going to get women to talk. I mean, this is what they do. This is how the show does it. Because the bottom line is, you still don't want to get on the producer's bad side. And let's face it, there's probably going to be a summer show next summer. And so then Steve makes the point that the reason why uh, these women and men uh, will play up to whatever the drama is, is because they want to stay on the good side of the movers and shakers of the show who may or may not be, uh, you know, able to really make their lives, um, whether it be as a future Bachelor contestant or whatever other show they have going on. These producers, they don't just work for The Bachelor. They'll leave that show and go work for another show, and it's all kind of part of the same industry. So the thing you want to do as a contestant, probably first and foremost, in some cases, is show the producers you're willing to play ball. And if you're not willing to play ball, you better be as pivotal a character 
as needed for the show to want to keep you around. If you're a Sydney, and you have to remember, before Sydney, there was that other, forgive me for not remembering her name, which proves my point, that other blonde uh, contestant who was kind of like the early season villain. And then all of a sudden, she was off the show, and then Sydney kind of took the reins. It's because Sydney had no shot at being any, you know, real contender. For Joey, the only shot she had is to rile up the the cast and and all that jazz. She's aware of that. I'm aware of that. We need our audience to be aware of that, to understand that the show is not all reality, that it is real people doing things in a manipulated situation. That's what it is, folks. Hate to break it to you. All right, well, I got a lot more content coming your way. I'll be live at 12.15 Central Standard Time on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And we'll be live tonight at 7 p.m. East Coast, 6 p.m. Central for our pre-show live stream. No post-show live stream tonight. We'll do one next week, none tonight. All right, folks, we'll be back right after this.